When Hannah Clark's estranged husband murdered her and their three young children in Brisbane in February, it was unthinkable to most of us that someone could be that evil or brutal. He doused his family in petrol and set them alight. The crime highlighted the danger and complexity of domestic violence, as does the story of the woman you're about to meet. Jackie Barker is a victim of frightening abuse, made worse because police refused to take action. But she didn't give up. Instead, Jackie bravely fought back by launching a private criminal prosecution against her ex-partner. Jackie Barker and Cynthia Dennis are like-minded women. Both love the sea, the outdoors, and for a while, and at different times, the same man. But they also share memories of intimidation and threats of violence at the hands of that man, Mark Jacobs. What's he done? Poured petrol all over the kitchen. Why'd you get a jerry can? I was just lost in temper, mate. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I was going to do with it. What's it about, Jackie? 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 And this is what can happen when Jacobs loses his temper. Jackie? I was frozen. I was frozen to the spot. That's the moment I thought I was going to die. I just don't want people to feel like I do. We don't have to live like this. We shouldn't have to put up with so much abuse and control and threats, whether it's physical or mental. It's just not right. Cynthia was Mark Jacobs' first wife, and then Jackie, his partner, for four years, until domestic abuse saw her end the relationship. But it was just the start of a new battle, which would see Jackie pursue justice and uncover a police culture of disinterest and disbelief. There's evidence of someone having fuel just poured all over their head. Secret phone recordings exposing the truth behind police inaction. If you've got no evidence other than Mr Jacobs, then I believe that you're being biased. But Jackie would not be cowed. In a rare and costly move, she took the law into her own hands. Jackie, my client, was extremely persistent, strong, brave, an incredible woman that wanted to see justice done. Jackie's experience was made even more shocking by the recent murder of Hannah Clark and her three young children. It was a crime that shook the nation. Their lives were tragically extinguished by a estranged husband and father, Rowan Baxter, when he doused petrol on them and set them alight. There were many people close to me who contacted me um, and said, you know, that could have been you. Their relationship started in 2011. Jackie, a mum of two, found Mark Jacobs, a father of two, fun and dependable. She admired him greatly for his work as a lifeguard. I never believed that he would be capable of attacking me. You know, he was the lifeguard hero. He was a person whose job it was to save lives. But over the next four years, the relationship became unpredictable and frightening. On Friday, the 20th of November, 2015, it imploded. Jackie and Jacobs met at home to talk about their future together. But it became hostile almost immediately. He stood right over me. He was right here and he's, he's a big guy. And it was at that moment that I felt that he was going to do something to me. And then it turned physical, but it's Jackie who struck out. She says she did so out of fear. It was as though his mask had finally fallen and I hit him in the jaw and ran and put the kitchen bench between us. Why do you think you hit him? I hit him to give me enough time to run and um, get myself in a, in a safe place. 
In his police interview, Mark Jacobs says Jackie provoked his violent reaction. I've turned my head and I got King hit in the jaw. Okay, so I lost my temper, threw a few things around. As much as Jacobs tried to brush off his outburst to police, it's what he did next that truly terrified Jackie. He leaves the kitchen and this time returns from the garage with a jerry can filled with petrol. So he's about two metres or so away from me and all I remember is him having a, a red plastic fuel container in his hand. I remember the black lid being thrown off onto the floor. I remember um, one big swing of his arm. I remember just turning my face and the fuel hit me on the chest and splashed up into my face and my hair. Now soaked in petrol, the danger Jackie faces is horrifyingly apparent with Jacob's next move. He opened the cupboards above the stove and reached up for a lighter and he said, I'm going to burn this place down. And then he threatened me with the lighter. In what way? He knelt down and he held the lighter about 20 centimetres from me, looking up at me, looking straight in my eyes. And that's the moment I thought I was going to die. And I said, don't be an idiot. And he dropped the lighter onto the floor. And I think that's what saved my life. That you somehow reached him with those words. Mm. When Mark was picked up by police later that night, he confessed to wanting to burn the house down. But in his official record of interview six months later, he couldn't remember saying that, and nor could he adequately explain why he would bring petrol into the kitchen. Why did you have the jerry can start with? Oh, I don't know. I was just being stupid. Yeah. You know, it was just a stupid thing that I grabbed. Yeah. Because I was pissed off and I was getting provoked. And at any stage, did oh. you um, like step with um, with the lighter? No. Step towards him, like she's saying there. No. Um, bed down with a lighter, saying I'm no. going to burn this place down. That didn't happen. I didn't. I didn't try to burn the place down. Yeah. And. With that, I wouldn't know because I don't think that lighter works. <laughs> so, it hasn't worked for months. Just... Chillingly, Jacob's first wife, Cynthia Dennis, has heard these words too many times before. He often said he would burn the house down before I got any money out of the house. There was all the other threats daily. Were you always on high alert? Uh, yeah, as time went on, more and more eggshells. I would just got quieter and quieter as the years went on, it was just safer. You must have felt like you were disappearing. Yeah, definitely. Cynthia and Jacobs were together for a decade and have two children. Like Jackie's experience, Cynthia says the relationship with Jacobs was progressively getting more volatile, where he would belittle her, throw her against the wall. The breaking point came when Cynthia says he dragged her to the bed, pinned his knees to her chest and put his hands around her throat. What did you think was going to happen to you in that moment? Um, I actually remember thinking, with no exaggeration, because I remember it like yesterday, I looked up and I saw his eyes, just his pupils just go smaller and smaller. I thought, he's going to murder me. Like, he just changed. I saw this flash go across his eyes. Did you go to the police? No, I didn't even think about it because I didn't think it was not much. I just didn't know because we were married if they'd really care. But it was enough for her to end the marriage, after which she says Mark Jacobs started a campaign of punishment, including stalking and trespassing. His actions so frightened and infuriated Cynthia, she did finally seek help from the local Noosa police, at least half a dozen times. Since I left 
my ex. My life has just been a living hell. Like I thought I had a crappy existence and marriage and it was horrible. But to have what I had after I left him and to be unheard and just the dismissiveness of it all. It's just the worst and it's fearful and it's scary and it changes your life because you, you're not living freely. Mm. You're just pretty much surviving every day. Are you living freely now? Um, it's getting better, but one way of coping with it was I thought I've got children to him, so maybe that's making it worse. So I thought maybe I've got like a 20 year sentence and one day I'll be out of jail and I'll um, have my life back. It's a very bleak way of looking at it, isn't it? Yeah, but in some ways it helped because I gave myself a timeline. Coming up. He admitted to them that he wanted to burn the house down. I thought they've got an admission. Why wouldn't investigators throw the book at Mark Jacobs? They're really not interested in prosecuting domestic violence cases. Will these secret tapes reveal what they really thought? Could there be a problem with Nursa Police? That needs to be investigated. That's next on 60 Minutes. Go ahead, you have the police. Where is your emergency? Yeah, Jackie Barker is desperate for help. Jackie, I can't understand you. Sorry. And this go. is why. Who's he? Everywhere, my partner. After smashing up the house, her partner, Mark Jacobs, has gone one terrifying step further. What's he done? Poured petrol all over the kitchen. He says he wants to burn the house down, and he's thrown petrol and has a lighter. Can you smell it? Oh, uh, yes, I'm standing in it. We'll hop out of it. The petrol has splashed onto Jackie's chest and face. No, I'm in my kitchen and he's left now. Has he left that address? Oh, uh, yes. Seven minutes later, police and ambulance arrive. I remember a feeling of, like, rising panic in me and really just terror. Police collect Jackie's petrol-soaked clothes before she's taken to hospital complaining of burning skin and a constricted throat. While Jackie isn't sure of what her legal options are, she makes it clear to police in this bedside interview she wants Jacobs held accountable. A really crazy piece of behaviour and I'd yeah. like there to be a consequence for yeah. that, but I, I don't know what the choices are there. I obviously... I uh, want him to be responsible and I want to feel safe. Mm. My kids and I don't want him doing that again. Yeah, we're just looking purely at the criminal side. We work for the CIB, OK? The uniform guys are doing all the DV stuff. According to Jackie's barrister, Clem van der Wegen, Jacobs told police everything they needed to know to charge him that night. The police had intercepted Jacobs on the night and they observed him to be aggressive, smelling of petrol, and that he admitted to them that he wanted to burn the house down because he was sick of it anyway. I thought they've got an admission. But it would take police another six months and only at Jackie's insistence before they even formally questioned Jacobs. By then, he denied any earlier admissions to police. So, at no time did I threaten to burn the house down. Okay, yep. Or that I can recall. Yeah. Or intentionally burn her. Yeah. Finally, in July 2016, Jacobs pleaded guilty to willful damage for the destruction he'd wreaked on their home and was fined $1,500. But for his threats using petrol and a lighter, there was nothing, no charge to answer. It was devastating. I really felt that the institution that I believed was there to protect me and my children, by not acting, was actually protecting him. Jackie. Hi, Clem. How are you? Good, thank you. Jackie wanted to get to the bottom of why police were unwilling to charge her ex-partner, despite his dangerous behaviour. He obviously had the actions, and you obviously had the fear. She enlisted yes. barrister Clem van der Wegen to help investigate and to push for a prosecution. 
This is a phone call I'm about to make. It's Clem's approach may have been unconventional. He secretly recorded his conversation with the senior police officer who was reviewing Jackie's complaint about police inaction. Did you see the ambulance report um, that was made on the night by um, the par paramedic who attended in the first instance? He, on his report, states that female was doused in petrol and threatened to be set alight. Yep. Um, well, that's, well, that's what she's saying. Never mind the ambulance report, never mind Jackie's petrol doused clothes, or even Jacob's admission to police of bringing petrol into the house. The senior police officer seems to give more weight to Jacob's subsequent account than to Jackie's. There's no evidence in the ambulance report of her being intoxicated. Where's your evidence that she was intoxicated other than Mr Jacobs? Because if you've got no evidence other than Mr Jacobs, then I believe that you're being biased. To my mind, he wasn't looking at the facts, the objective facts. He was relying on, she said this, he said that. In other words, there are conflicting versions. And for that reason, I thought he was biased. So, Commissioner, is domestic violence one of those issues that, you know, you wish you didn't have to talk about anymore? I wish I didn't have to Queensland talk about Queensland Police Commissioner Katerina Carroll says domestic violence sadly remains the biggest call-out for police. Oh, my God. Yes. She's heard Jackie's distressed call for help and sympathises with her, but says it was the law, not police, who let her down. <laughs> Does it worry you that we're not all jumping up and down saying he brought in a jerry can of petrol? I mean, I don't mean to be crass about this, but did she have to be hurt before the police would act against oh, that? Oh, definitely not, and that is very concerning. But I also know the police actually made sure that she was safe on the night I when know, the triple zero happened. In terms of making him yep. accountable, in terms yep. of teaching him, sorry, mate, but this is just not on. You don't do this. There was no And we, we always want to keep the victim safe. And he should be held accountable. I am just um, of the view that the decisions were made purely around the legislation and also the sufficiency of evidence. Certainly, the police prosecutor at the time gave very little chance of winning a conviction against Jacobs if it went to court. Incredulously, he said it would be impossible to prove that by bringing in petrol, Jacobs intended to alarm Jackie Barker. Can you explain to me why that would not be alarming? The difficulty I have is that is one of the bones of contention I understand about the evidence, about the intention of the lighter, but I cannot go into the intricacies of that one single case. I am not the officer that made the decision at the time, and nor the officer that six months down the track made the decision not to take the matter forward. The prosecutor says it's also clear he placed the means to ignite the petrol at her feet arguably giving her the decision to light the house. I mean, that's a nonsense, isn't it? Giving her the decision. The prosecutor said that. The prosecutor said that he could yeah. argue this in court as a defence, that he's put the lighter at her feet, yeah. giving her the choice to burn the house down or not. Look, that mightn't be the way that I would see it, but obviously that's a statement that prosecutor has made. When I look back and say, could we have done it differently? I think you can always do things differently. If we have hurt her as a result of those decisions, I apologise for that. I think they're really not interested in prosecuting domestic violence cases. And, you know, this culture is coming from you know, the senior police prosecutor in the Sunshine Coast. These senior policemen are setting um, the culture and the standards for all the police in that area. All too aware of that culture is Cynthia Dennis, Mark Jacobs' first wife. She too says she had reason to seek protection from Noosa Police against Jacobs and says she too was let down. Do you know how many times you 
either visited the police station or rang the police to tell them about him. Would you have a figure for that? Um, at least six or seven, enough to make me feel like, can I ring them again? On one occasion, after she and Jacobs had separated, he barged into her house. To escape him, Cynthia locked herself in her bedroom. She says Jacobs then tried to break in by using a knife on the lock. I called the police because I was frightened and he'd come into my home where I lived, broken and tried to get into my bedroom. And I was just totally sure it's not a lover's tiff. I was like, I, I've, I've left him. How did that make you feel? Um, hopeless, just hopeless. I didn't, there was nothing, I just felt there was nothing I could do, like, about him. Could there be a problem with Noosa Police? If that's the case, um, that needs to be investigated because I expect my officers to have utmost concern for the safety of victims. If there is a cultural issue with my officers in terms of domestic violence, that also needs to be investigated because I will not accept that. The organisation will not accept that and certainly the community will not accept that. Coming up, it took a huge toll on my family. Not giving in, hopefully highlight the significant failings. Jackie takes on the job. It's not an easy task to take out a private criminal prosecution. No, the police wouldn't. Not once do they bother to speak to Jackie. That's next on 60 Minutes. Jackie Barker feels she's been let down twice. Firstly, by her former partner, Mark Jacobs, who in 2015 smashed up their home and threatening to burn it down, splashed petrol on her. And secondly, by police who refused to act against him. They see the lighter, they see the petrol, and the perpetrator makes a verbal admission of intending to burn the house down while I'm in it. If the police cannot bring a successful prosecution against a perpetrator in those circumstances, and they're in fact unwilling to do so, then what hope is there for women and children? Jackie's battle was now with Queensland Police. Her complaint was that the investigation was flawed and the police were not objective or impartial. The complaint went to the CCC, the Crime and Corruption Commission, and then onto police ethical standards, which found there was no bias and police acted appropriately. But barrister Clem van der Wegen has little faith in police investigating themselves. In seeking a review of Jackie's case, what shocked you the most? Well, throughout the whole investigation process, the review, the complaint that we made to the CCC and the subsequent investigation by ethical standards, not once, not once did they bother to speak to Jackie. Police inaction would not stop Jackie demanding justice. So in July last year, four years after that shocking encounter, Jackie resorted to the only avenue left to her. She took out a private criminal prosecution where Mark Jacobs was charged with threatening violence. Jackie was effectively now doing the work of Queensland Police. It's not an easy task, is it, to take out a private criminal prosecution? <laughs> No, it was very lengthy, it was expensive, it was exhausting, and it took a huge toll on, um, on my family, on my children, and our quality of life. Courageously, single-mindedly, and quite literally, Jackie took the law into her own hands. And the trial of Mark Jacobs was set for the 5th of July 2019, with Clem van der Wegen prosecuting the case. 
What do you have to do to bring a private criminal prosecution in this country? Well, you simply go down to the local court, or in this case, the, the magistrate's court um, here in Queensland, and you uh, file a complaint. Do you think you should have to do that as a private citizen? No. As a private citizen, no, you shouldn't have to do that. Most prosecutions are carried out by the police. She provoked me yeah. into throwing a chair. Yeah, okay. okay? Yeah. So you were provoked into throwing that chair? That's yes. Okay. Thanks to Jackie's persistence, Mark Jacobs was now on trial for threatening violence, a crime that could see him go to jail for two years. At any time did you assault Jackie in any way with the petrol or no. in any other way? Um, no. Did any petrol go on her or was that, Mark, was that in the struggle? I'm not sure whether the petrol on her or not. I, I, like I said, it yeah. went so off. At no stage did you yeah. intentionally no. pour... At no petrol. stage did I intentionally throw petrol on her to burn her. Yeah. Um, in Even Jacobs finally acknowledged his actions were likely to have caused fear, gave up the fight and pleaded guilty. But he denied that he intended to inflict violence against her. Nor did he intend to splash her with petrol, which the magistrate accepted. Jacob's guilty plea to threatening violence was well regarded by the magistrate who, instead of sending him to jail, sentenced Jacobs to 120 hours community service and agreed not to record a conviction. Despite that, to Jackie, this was a victory. Mark Jacobs had finally admitted to causing her distress and fear. So was it worth it? Yes. Yes, it was worth it. To know that Jacobs had pleaded guilty was a really good feeling because all along he denied and minimised his abuse. I really had to take the responsibility for keeping myself and my family safe on my own shoulders. But for Jackie, the fear goes on. It's very frightening and it's also exhausting. She's been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and she and her children have moved interstate to an undisclosed address to feel safer. I never wanted star in me. Even so, she'd do it all again. Her legal action was never just about her, but about making accountable perpetrators and police alike. And what about in terms of changing the police attitude in that area? Do you think that your private prosecution has done anything to change that view? Um, not the prosecution itself, but the exposure of the fact that the police didn't bring a prosecution and an individual woman, a victim of family violence, had to take those steps will hopefully highlight, um, you know, the significant failings in policing domestic violence. Is it only worth it if it hurts? If this story raises issues and you need to speak with someone, call 1800 RESPECT or 1800 737 732. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.